How important it is, is it to, be, to gain the status of a anchor tenant in the eyes of property developers, especially in your Africa expansion strategy? Well, I think what, let, 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 let's just look at our own situation. We wouldn't invest in, in a major shopping center or in a major property investment unless we secured that the tenant that actually trades there is responsible for a certain portion of the rental and would attract other smaller tenants that can live off the shopping center. So for us it's very important that we have an anchor tenant. And I think that's probably generally accepted fact right throughout the world. People just cannot afford to sort of put that sort of money at stake with a chance of failure. Whitey, in your aggressive expansion, you've never had to come to the market for capital. No. Is that important to you? Yes, it's important to me because if you look at the growth of the shop right share and the, and the growth of the market cap of the company, uh, we, we never really had a share with anybody. We, we used our own funds and we managed our stock levels well, we managed our cash flows well. And today we cash flushed, if you can call that, if you have a billion or more in cash. Uh, and we really don't have to go to the market to, to split our shares up and um, maybe have shareholders that we don't like. You've been quoted as saying that one of your personal ambitions is to bring down the cost of food on the African continent. How far are you in achieving that ambition? M one of my personal goals is really to, to assist the African continent, continent to, to be in a situation where it can fairly compete with those countries outside Africa uh, because it does have the resources, it does have the people and food is a, a major portion of that, of that motion. So is infrastructure, so is food and so a lot of disciplines that you can bring to the, to the country. So it gives me great pleasure and joy to rather open a store in Nigeria and for the first time see people are shopping under perfect conditions where they are entitled to do it. 2007 marked a failed management buyout under Breit Private Equity. Firstly, what was the rationale for the The rationale attempt? was simple in the sense that the prices went, uh, I mean, we were taken on a long string with prices that at the end just didn't make sense. I'm dead against having debt to, to, to work for uh, where the relevant advantage was so close that we said no to it. Um, but it was purely that the and we were being strung out to, uh, to, a, to a price that, uh, that was just didn't make sense to us. Would you go there again? I cannot say no. Depends on the world in 10 years' time or 5 years' time or 3 years from now. Whitey, just looking at your appetite for high-risk projects, that comes with a certain amount of stress, doesn't it? No, my appetite for risk, not just high-risk projects, my appetite for risk. It does have stress, but it does keep you alive. I don't think too many people die of stress. Uh, I think it just keeps you going in it. And, and it is very nice that if you tackle something that has a high risk attached to it and you're successful on it, it just gives you double the amount of, of satisfaction. When you and, and Christo Visa, your chairman, say that you are Afro-optimists, what do you mean by that? Is, does he say that of me or do I say that of it him? It says that you both say it. <laughs> of each other. I, is that the reality? Well, he's the Afro-optimist because he always pushes me in front. But uh, yes, we do like to, you know, to believe that things can be done. And we, maybe it's probably because of our background. We come from, both come from relatively poor backgrounds out of a country, uh, out, of a small country out of small country towns uh, where we had to fend for ourselves and when things just didn't come easy. Why did you go for the central distribution model in 2003? And I see a number of your competitors are late in adoption of this model. Problem, that's not a that's not a, a stroke of genius to understand that one truck to a store can be d delivering cheaper than 20 trucks to a store. So uh, it didn't take me too many nights to work that out. I think I knew that when I was a schoolboy in Portugal. So. Why other people didn't do it, maybe it's stubbornness, maybe it's something which I haven't learned at university or at school, but uh, there, was, there, was no, there was no magic in it. The central IT model that you've got as well, your information systems have been centralized and you've spoken extensively about the benefits derived from that approach. Yeah, you know, we were criticized in the, in the late, sev well, in the 80s, for being behind in IT systems. That was, at, I think, at the area where computers were as large as your building and software was as inadequate as what you can call it. 
uh, we uh, took the decision that we would rather wait and make sure that the information we get out is usable rather than the other way around. I, I spend a lot of time in America looking at systems there. I couldn't find solutions. And I think we were very lucky and that, that, that we entered that part of the, of the business equation exactly at the right time after the acquisitions of Checkers. And quite obviously, if you, if you run over the borders of countries, I mean, there was a myth that, that supermarkets can't run over borders of countries or trade over, we couldn't unless we had the, the information that we have today. So unless your IT technology actually can help you manage a country, work uh, a business in a, in a country that's 1,000 or 2,000 miles away, you have no chance to survive. Despite your listing on the JSC Limited, you also listed in Namibia and Zambia. Yeah. What benefits do you derive from those listings? Very little, but you know the benefits. The benefits were requested, or, or the listings were requested by local people who felt that they should share in the in the in the growth of the company. Very difficult if you list a company on its own. The, the 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 relative size or the small cap of the of the listing would prohibit it from ever being a a vehicle, so we just listed as, as due listings on those. On those Do you anticipate chain. more African listings? Well, we would list uh, depending on the size of the African country and the, and the appetite they have to invest on the stock exchange. The countries that we have listed in, we haven't had great trade there because uh, the pension funds are only new things going up into Zambia and, and other countries. I think that the share markets will grow in those countries as Africa develops. And then we must really look at the whole situation. In your outlook statement, you say that market conditions you expect to remain the same given job losses in the country. And you managed to add 7,000 jobs in this period when other companies are, are laying off. Yeah. How did you manage to do that? Well, first of all, we open stores and we have a policy in ShopRite that we promote people from the inside. Jobs is a sacred area of our business. I, I, I've seen people being poor, and when you're poor, it doesn't mean that you don't have a thousand rand. When you're poor, it means you don't have money to buy food, and you have to beg or you have to steal. So I'm very sensitive to people that don't have a job to feed their children or to look after their family. And for that reason, we, we are very cautious as to how we treat jobs. Even in the times when we bought the OK or Checkers, we went very, very quietly about that pace that not to create job losses for many people. Uh, there were people laid off in, in, uh, in, in the top echelons of the company, but certainly we maintained the lifestyle of most of the families. New stores, we're always going to open up. We like quiet periods like now or difficult periods like now to extend our business model and to, and to create extra space in, in, in the employment market. What's the pipeline after this year in terms of your aggression or your strategy to expand in Africa? Is it still very robust or is it? Well, it's robust in the sense that we have a, a, a dedicated program now to actually make sure that a, a country like Nigeria gets up to whatever number, 100 stores we can get to. And we're busy with two other countries in Africa that we're looking at at the moment. You said 13 stores this year. Is that an easy target to achieve? No, we, we didn't say 13 opening. We've got something like 16 or 18, which is now in either in the ground or waiting for some stamp from some banker to pay for them. But we have probably the most stores now right up, up, in, up in, in the discussion in Nigeria that we've ever had in any other country, African country. With the deployment of capital, what do you make of the talk of a double dip recession? Do you just cast it aside? Well, you know, I, I was never part of that double dip uh, recession. Uh, I never wear striped suits, so I, I was never in the, in, the, in the city. I was never lost my job, or, uh, and I don't really look at the share market on a daily basis. So in our business, we just kept on doing what we were good at. And yes, we saw people suffering with job losses outside our business and I was exposed to that with friends of mine but uh, I think it was in South African context overdone I think we probably missed a lot of it. Uh, Do you feel that the ShopRite model can weather any economic storm? Can I translate what you're saying into that? I, I wouldn't say weather any model but would certainly be in the top five percent of models that can weather storms. Right, I know you're not going anywhere soon, but uh, when you do think about life beyond ShopRite, 
What does that involve? I see your hobbies are golf and fishing, farming. Anything there that you're going to take further? Um, uh, uh, can you define this life after shop <laughs> that so I can think clearly on it? <laughs> no, it's, uh, there is no short-term plans to have a life after shop right because I have a life while I'm working for shop right. Shop right is a very nice place to work and my friends work there. I have some of my children around me. It's, it's really part of the game that we love playing and we have enough time to have the odd game of golf uh, to keep us in reasonable shape. Whitey, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for your time. That was Whitey Basson, the CEO of ShopRite.